If you have an impairment that makes using a computer a challenge, Windows 10 includes many built-in accessibility features that can make it easier to use. Coming up, I'll show you every feature and setting that I'm aware of, and hopefully you'll find at least one or two of these to be useful in giving you a better experience when using Windows 10. Let's get started. There's more than a dozen features I'll be showing you, so we're going to dive right in and open the Settings app. You could use the keyboard shortcut, which is the Windows key plus I, or in the lower left corner, left click the Windows Start menu icon and select Settings. From here, go to Ease of Access. In the left pane, you'll see that they're grouped into three categories, which are Vision, Hearing, and Interaction. Let's start here at the top in Vision and go through these in order, beginning with Display. If you're finding the font size to be too small when reading any text, you can make the text bigger with this handy slider. Just left click on it and move it from left to right to make it bigger. You'll see a preview above the bar. And when you've got it where you want it, click on Apply to immediately make the change. This will only change the size of the text. Icons, images, and other items will remain their current size. Below that, there's a drop down menu that will make everything bigger. Only use this if you need to. For most people, increasing the size of the text should be sufficient. If you scroll down, you'll find additional settings to experiment with. If your eyes have difficulty focusing and you actually want to read the notifications, you might want to go to Show Notifications For and increase the time. The default is 5 seconds. If you sometimes have difficulty finding the mouse pointer on your screen, the settings in cursor and pointer can help. Some of you might remember, this is a cool feature I recently showed in another video. You can change the pointer size with the slider. Let's move it all the way to the right and make it big. Sometimes bigger is better. You can change the pointer color. Your choices are white, black, inverted, which is awful, and you can change the pointer color. You can change the color below. There's also a slider to change the thickness of the cursor. Magnifier is quite useful if you have trouble reading your screen or if you're a creative wanting a close-up view when working with Photoshop or any other design program. While there is a toggle to turn it on, it's more convenient to use the keyboard shortcuts which are listed right below it. The Windows key and the plus key will turn it on. Using that same combination of the Windows key and the plus key will let you zoom in. The Windows key and the minus key will let you zoom out. Pressing the Windows key and the Escape key will turn the magnifier off. I'll turn it back on again here. Let's go to the magnifier box and go to Views. We're currently in full screen. There's a couple of other options, including Lens and Docked. I'm not a big fan of Docked, but let me show you Lens. It will give you a magnifying glass. Using the Windows key with the plus or minus key will let you zoom in or zoom out on a specific area. If you suffer from sensitivity from light or color blindness, there's a switch to turn on the color filters. I should probably be using this, but I don't. I once bought a brown truck. Everyone tells me it's gray. Huge mistake on my part because I don't like the color gray. Moving on, let's scroll down. And I'll expand the window here at the bottom so you can see the color palette. It's best to experiment with the various filters to find out what works best for you. You'll be able to see the changes on the color wheel below. Another useful one for people with color blindness or impairment issues is high contrast. It can make it easier to view images, text, and other items on your screen. Let's toggle the switch to turn it on. Once that's done, you'll see that this drastically alters the overall color scheme for Windows. Selecting the drop-down menu will let you select from various themes. You can also customize the colors for text, hyperlinks, and other stuff. Narrator is a read-aloud feature that is extremely beneficial for those that have low vision issues or even blindness. In short, it describes what is on your screen, reads selected items, and even reads text as you type. I'll leave it turned off for now while we go through its settings. In Startup Options, if you plan to use this on a regular basis, check the box next to Allow the Shortcut Key to Start Narrator. 
Having this checked lets you turn the narrator on or off using the keyboard shortcut, which is the Windows key, plus Control, plus Enter. Let's scroll down. You can change the narrator's voice, the speed, pitch, and volume. And if you keep scrolling, there are dozens of other settings that you can change. Let's go back to the top. It will start reading once I turn it on. Settings window, use narrator, turn on narrator, toggle switch, on. If it's your first time using narrator, I'd recommend clicking the link, open narrator home. This will give you additional help using it. The first of two in the hearing category is audio. The change device volume to the right is the same as the system sound settings, so we'll skip over that one. If you have loss of hearing in just one ear, turning on mono audio will convert the stereo sound from both channels into a single channel, letting you hear everything. If you struggle to hear audio alerts, you can have them visually displayed on your screen. If you click on the drop down menu, your choices are flash the title bar of the active window, flash the active window, and flash the entire screen. There may be times when reading subtitles on a video is difficult especially when the background is a light color. In closed captions, there are several settings that you can change, including the color, transparency, style, size, and effects. When you make any change, you'll get a preview in the window above. When you scroll down the page, there are background settings for you to play around with to improve the readability of the text. Speech is the first one in the interaction category. I've covered this before, so I'll go through these quickly. If you want to use dictation in Microsoft Word or any other text field on your computer, press the Windows key plus H to begin. We'll skip over Cortana and go down to Dictate Text and Control Your Device using only your voice. With this turned on, you can even open programs on your computer with your voice. Open Vivaldi. In keyboard, there's just a couple things to point out. For those times you need an on-screen keyboard, just toggle the switch to turn it on. Let's close that out. If you'd prefer, there's a Windows keyboard shortcut shown on the screen that will turn it on or off. It's the Windows key plus Control plus O. Below that, if you have finger dexterity issues that make using keyboard shortcuts a difficult task, enable sticky keys. This lets you press the keys on your physical keyboard one at a time for keyboard shortcuts. For example, we'll do this now for the shortcut to open the on-screen keyboard. And now we'll close it. In mouse, there's just one setting and it's a cool one. Turning it on gives you the ability to use your numeric keypad on your keyboard to move the mouse pointer on your screen. You have a couple sliders here below to change the pointer speed and acceleration. And the last one in this category is eye control. If you have a supported eye tracking device, which I don't, this will let you control your mouse cursor, type using the on-screen keyboard, and perform other functions with the movement of your eyes. I'm not sure how well it works. If you're using one of these supported devices, let me know how well it works for you. Thanks for watching. If this video was useful for you, give it a thumbs up and share with others. What features do you use to improve your experience on Windows 10? Let us know about them in the comments. And if you're new to this channel, subscribe and click the bell to learn more about Windows 10, along with other tech-related stuff here on Tech Umbo.